Hi guys, welcome back. This is part two of how I use BCC10 within Avid. If you haven't seen part one, then part two probably won't make that much sense to you, so I urge you to go check it out. Uh, in part one, I looked at Mocha, uh, the 3D camera flare, and also the Ray Streaky effect. In part two, I'm looking at some more Mocha stuff. We're looking at the Light Leaks effect and also the glimpse effect. I just want to say thank you to AV3 for giving this, me this opportunity to come and show you how I work and my workflows. And obviously to Chris Davis from Eastfield Media, thank you so much for your content, much appreciated. Check out the sequence, check out how it works, and I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so we're back in the sequence. This time we're gonna look at, or we'll focus on the glimpse effect, which you can see now, and how I use that with the mocha tracking as well. And we're also gonna be focusing on the light leaks effect and how I use mocha tracking and beat reactor to sort of set those off. Obviously, you, you can still see this camera flares and streaky rays stuff going on. If you go back to part one of this little video series, you will find how I did those clips and hopefully that will give you some idea on how I've used them. So if we just move forward and we go onto this clip here and I go into my effect editor. So if we quickly scroll through and have a quick look at the clip itself, as you can see, the glint effect is actually applied to the stanchions of the forks. That's the two upright golden color pieces and to his helmet, which is there, but there's nothing happening across the eye mask at all. So we'll go into that. Now, if we just enter effect editor mode, quickly bypass the uh, BCC raise effect and the correct selected effect, straight into BCC. So obviously to create an effect that is focused on certain areas, I've had to use a mask, or a tracking mask basically. So for that, I've used the amazing uh, Mocha, such a great tool really makes things a lot easier to use. So I've launched Mocha, as you can see. I'm running four tracks in Mocha itself. There's a fork left and right track, which is these two here. If I just go a bit further down, you will see there's a helmet track and an eye mask track as well. If you saw the part one of this little series, you would have seen how I tracked a tree uh, trunk to not include some light ray effects. If you haven't seen that, go back to that um, episode, have a quick look at this, and this will make a lot more sense, obviously. But if I quickly just blast through this and you'll understand what I've done here. So there's two fork tracks, which is these two. That's the into out for those because once they get past this point, they leave the frame. And there's the helmet track, which is there with the mask track. So let's just focus on the helmet track and the eye track because we haven't done this yet. Uh, the helmet track is slightly different. Well, the helmet track is just a basic track from this. This is the in point here when it enters the, enters the frame. And that will just run straight through to when the frame finishes. The eyes track is a little bit different because that's set to subtract mode. Now, if you look at the helmet track, that's set to add mode. So if I was to show you both tracks together, and then I show you the mats, you'll see the eye track is actually cutting a hole through the helmet mat. And that's why the eyes are set to subtract mode. If I change that to add mode, you'll see the difference. And now you can see it's actually matted up the whole thing. So by setting the eyes to subtract mode, it cuts a hole for the map, which is rather useful. And also another great thing about Mocha is you can till a track to pick up someone else's data. So if you look at the eyes, I've told the eyes to link to the helmet track, as you can see there. Two reasons is that any data the helmet track uh, created when I did the first track, the eyes mask, which is part of the same, pretty much part of the same unit, will move exactly the same, keeps them nice and tight together makes them move as one and it saves half the time of uh, doing, doing any tracking obviously this track was very short but for more complex tracks it's, i think it will take make a big difference so that's how we basically did that so we ended up with four tracks but only three tracks of data so basically save that i won't save it now because obviously i've uh, i've done all this before so this is how we ended up in this position where we had all these tracks happening as you can see that's how that works. Okay, so if we have a quick look at the uh, the rest of the glint effects, as you can see, I've enabled Beat Reactor. I'll go into Beat Reactor when I look at the light uh, leaks effect, which I've used on the second last clip, and we'll go into that and, and have a quick quick look. The reason why I used light leaks was to act was to add a bit of life to the glint of the, or the glint effect. I didn't want it to, to just look like a dead glint on something. I wanted a bit of movement, a bit of light as if light was coming through the trees, hitting the bike, hitting the gear and stuff like that. It is a bit stylized to have overcooked it a bit, but there we go. It's, uh, it, makes it, it makes it a little more interesting in my opinion. So if we look at the glint effect itself, um, this is where the wielded your oyster, if that's the right term, wielded playground. Okay, if we just open up show effects browser, this is showing you 
all the different presets in the glint effects obviously it's keeping hold of the track data so you can just blast through stuff have a quick look see what you like and then some of them are quite intense could do that that's quite quite a, <laughs> a substantial effect and obviously all these controls one thing that did get me out is when you increase the threshold of a glint you actually get less glints happening decrease it you get more glint that confused me for at least a minute or two um glint brightness everything else is pretty self-explanatory the only difference is i used the glint color i got from the background because i was trying to keep the color palette the same because i've been going for the same kind of feel for the whole sequence um also i the, the whole look here was trying to sort of this monochrome background trying to keep that which is why i didn't do any colorizing in this area I just wanted the yellow of his of the riders jumper and the glints on the helmets to really stand out slightly eerie looking early morning ride um kind of effect that i was going for on that okay so let's move on and see what else we've done on this track the correct selected effect if i just open up there it's a tiny tiny bit of work it was just washing out the background some more so literally i selected it and i select the color chose that color and i'm running an hsl option which is hue saturation luminance option there's obviously different options and it will it'll work differently and how you affect stuff but that's the the way i worked didn't add any color to it and we'll, we'll go into more about the actual um the correct the correct selected the correct selected effect at another stage because that's really useful when you get to color correcting stuff in layers really really powerful plugin and the bcc rays ring was obviously if you've seen part one you see how i use the streaky rays and this is pretty much the rays effect but i've just placed the ray behind the guy riding the bike has obviously added a little bit of color that morning color that i've been going for for the whole sequence um i wanted the fact that he was riding towards the cameraman away from the sunlight and thus all the light coming through the trees it is slightly stylized but i quite like that effect i quite like that look of how it looks when it's coming through the trees and that sort of sparks off with the glint effect so it, it makes the glint effect less less obvious it just looks like there's lots of light and dew bouncing around in the air that's the kind of effect i was trying to create when i created this clip so let's move on while we have the time to the second last clip okay so let's pull apart this effect and we'll have a quick look at what i've created um i'll just take you back for a quick second to show you the look and feel i was going for on that second to last clip basically in my head we've got the guy comes down there's a lovely drop off there as you can see there's some nice camera flare coming through which we created on obviously the streaky rays coming through the trees sort of builds a nice image a nice bit of tension um and there's a real fast cut coming up as he takes this corner as you can see it's a really fast corner he comes around there at speed and as you can see in my head we had a whole lot of photographers in the strobe standing there taking photographs as he comes down this straight section on his bike and that was the kind of thing i was imagining would be really cool if that was happening so this is the kind of effect i wanted to create and actually um yeah just in my head that worked so if we go to the effect we'll have a quick look at how i've created it so there's the bcc glint which we'll bypass for now i'll come back to that shortly and we'll go straight to light leaks light leaks is an amazing effect basically it's um from what i understand about it it's simulating light breaking through tiny gaps in the camera um super powerful you can do loads of coloring with uh, it can be animated with music which i think is a genius thing to do uh, saves loads of time um you've got four generators as you can see one two three four i'm only using two of them and they you can apply shapes to them with a parabolic shape and an eclipse shape and how it affects you can affect the positioning the rotation of them um and the scale etc etc but it's a really really powerful tool i'll go into this in more depth in a later tutorial obviously you have your effects browser at the top which shows you some amazing presets and you can just mess around with them forever and get the look and feel you want but we'll just go into what i've done so those of you with the eagle eyes will notice that i have a slight mask set around the helmet um, the reason being is i wanted the helmets just to keep popping out of the frame so that your eye had something to track um because i always find if your eyes get nothing to track it gets a bit lost within the whole image and the, and the, and the content so by making the in my head by making the uh helmet not be included in the effect it sort of kept it poking out of the frame a little bit very subtle but it just keep, it just gives your eye some something to lock onto and i did that by using obviously um my favorite tool in the whole of bcc 10 which is <laughs> mocha i just show you the matte 
you can see that's the mask there some heavy, some heavy feathering going on your feathering options obviously down here under the pixel choose a mocha mask option and there's, there's your feathering parameters there as you can see let me just take it back to what it was and i'll just show you the mocha quickly my mask i do like a bit of mocha um, there's four tracks happening but i've only actually used the one I originally i did four tracks basically his arms and the bike and it just sort of seemed to be too much um i sort of prefer less is more sometimes believe it or not so as you can see this is my helmet track and if i just start playing it you'll see how it works and that's pretty much the whole track for the whole helmet and it really sticks to it well mocha is really really useful at that really good um so once i have that basically what i've done is that has now been applied to the the preset i then went to another great feature in bcc lightlix is been able to import an audio file to animate the effect which I, which is such a great time saving tool um really creative and really easy to use one thing you can't do is you can't say to it use audio file in track one and two of your sequence uh, you have to bring the audio file in as a separate file as you can see here so you do it by enabling beat reactor and then going to external file clicking on that and the kind of person i am i just keep things really simple so i've put on my desktop this one funnily enough you can't miss that um, so that file is now applied to this preset and then obviously you can tell the effect or the audio file to talk to certain parts of the preset. So I've told the beat reactor to only apply to the glow intensity of my effect. So basically it's how bright the uh, effect goes. And that obviously goes within time to, to the music, which is the whole idea behind it. Uh, and then to see how the audio file is gonna affect it, you actually just go to your audio graph options, come down and take your audio graph opacity and turn that up a bit eventually you'll see mine there it is right okay so what you have here is the red area is all the well the red area is all your bottom end your base section the orange to your light kind of green areas all your mid-range and your blue and purple is all your high end so and this area has sample corner box as you can see i'm clicking on now this is telling um the effect preset to only look at this area for, for information when it comes to using the beat reactor so this area will govern what's happening on the beat reactor so you can obviously move this along by dragging it along and that then governs what you're doing once you obviously set your area up make sure you turn the graph opacity down and that then takes it away if you can see the glint effect is on the if i turn it on it helps you've got to see it and we'll try that again as you can see, I have the glint effect on the helmet and the stanchions of his forks. So in keeping with how I work, I used Mocha to mask and track the, um, the forks on the helmet. As you can see, I have it here eventually. That's the tracks for the forks and the helmet. Uh, they're only really fast tracks. I didn't really spend a lot of time on these, as you can imagine. And the whole idea was that you would get a glint of the forks and the helmet and then obviously there's a wheel track the wheel track is in subtract mode because you wouldn't get a glint off a rubber wheel obviously um but that's how we did that so basically we have the three the three tracks happening and the wheel is also taking this data for the track from the fork as you can see down here so it's set in, in subtract mode and it's getting its track data from the fork and then we'll just shut that for now and then so that's the base the glint effect applied to that area and then i went to beat reactor and once again, brought in the same file, this one, funnily enough. And then the difference with this one is I just use a different part of the audio spectrum to trigger that. As you can see, we have our bottom end in the red, orange and light green is your sort of, uh, your mid range, and then your, your bright green to your blue is your high end. The reason my thinking was that any of you guys understand audio, the transient, which is the leading edge of an, of an audio wave, is faster in high end than it is in the low end. And by doing this, basically what I've told the effect is for the glint to react quicker to the, the, the audio track than the sub. And that would mean that when the flashes go off on the light leaks effect, the glints on the helmet and the handlebars would be slightly ahead of it, which sort of makes more sense in my head. 
if that makes sense. That was quite hard to explain that. <laughs> but that's the kind of look I was going for, that kind of natural feel. Um, but yeah, that sort of works in my head. And I think that's a really good effect. The It sort of works because if you didn't know I did it, you wouldn't notice it. But if I took it away, you would notice it because I just bypassed the effect. You can really see the difference. How it looks quite, quite dead. I hope that was informative and it gave me an idea of how I use BCC10 within Avid. It's a super creative uh, program and the fact that you don't have to leave Avid to do anything is a real time saver, no more round tripping. Um, don't forget to go check out the AV3 website, really easy to purchase from, the store is really easy to work. Uh, there's really good tips and forums and blogs online and you can always ask for a discount, you never know, you may get one. But if you don't ask, you don't get. Thanks, take care, speak to you soon.